So I haven't done a React to Beginner Challenge in quite a while, so I figured, hey, let's just go ahead and do one. Someone on my Discord sent me a challenge where basically you have this like this image slider, and I guess your goal is to add the functionality to be able to go to a previous image, the next image, you can click play and you can click stop. And if you click play, it's supposed to just on an interval loop through your images. So it's just a normal, like a carousel type of component. I'm gonna see if I can at least implement the bare minimum functionality for the actual slide animation. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that because my CSS skills are not good. But let's just focus on the, the easy part, right? So let's start with the first button, previous. We have the entire app component here. We got a timeout, we got some images and some a slides array. We got some controls, which is correlating to these. And then we have the slider, which is just an image. Okay. And then down here, this is the actual slider component. We got the slide, we got the controls, and then we got like, I guess, the goals we're trying to do with this challenge. So to do the previous, what we need to do first of all is obviously add some type of on click. You need to be able to know when someone clicks on this previous button. Okay. Now when someone clicks on this previous button, we need to find out a way to show the last image. Okay. So if we're currently on image this one, and the way I know that is if you go down, you have slide here, and that takes in slide number of index zero right here, and that's passing it to slides index zero. So that's basically taking the first element of the array and it's just putting it in source. So we need to find a way to decrement this by one, but then also have it loop back to the very end of the array. Cause we're kind of like at the very beginning. And if you go back by one, you're going to get a negative value and the application is going to crash. Try to do that. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we don't have access to slide number. Okay, there is a slide number that's hard coded here. So whenever you have two components that need to share some type of state, the first thing that you can do is elevate state. So inside the slider itself, I'm going to go ahead and just say const. I'll say slide index and set slide index equals to use state. We're going to set that one to zero. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pass in the slide index here. And everything should still work on the right. But what this allows us to do is now we have access to taking a function, a state setter function, and we could pass it to controls here. I'm just going to go ahead and pass that in. But notice that in the props of controls itself, this controls component, we don't have that defined. Now he is using JavaScript. Um, I wish this was TypeScript, but we got to go with what we got. So now I'm passing in a setter function, which allows our unclick to do something. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say set slide index. Now we need to somehow set it to a new value, but we don't know what the current value is, right? Luckily, when you're using the use state setter function, you can actually pass it a callback. And I can say current index is the first argument of that callback. And how the callback works is whatever you return from this function is going to be the new value of state when this runs. Another approach we could do is we could pass in the slide index here if you wanted to, and then just use that. But I think this is good enough. So now what we want to do is we want to decrement it. So I'm going to say return cur index minus one. But again, like I mentioned, there's going to be an error with this. If I were to click previous, I think the app will actually crash because this index will go out of bounds. Now let's just try it out. There we go. The image is gone because there actually is an error down here in the console. So how do you have this value loop back from index zero all the way to index two? So one way you could potentially do that is I'm just going to wrap this value and then I'm going to do a ternary. Then I'm going to say if it's less than zero, then we're going to go ahead and just set it. Sorry, I was doing that wrong. This needs to be if this value is less than zero, then we're going to go ahead and just set it manually to slides.length. Otherwise, we will set it to cur index minus one. Now you might say, okay, well, we have the same duplicate stuff different places. Now I could just say const new index is equal to this. And then if I wanted to kind of clean this up, we do this, right? I don't like having code that's like copy different places. You know, dry up your code if you can. So now hopefully, if I were to 
refresh this page and click previous, it's still going out of bounds. And I think it's because um, this actually needs to be slides.length minus one because this will be three and index three isn't a valid index. So let's just go ahead and say minus one here and I will click on previous now. So if you're first learning how to code, make sure you understand arrays and how indexes work because it can get a little bit confusing. As you just saw, I got tripped up on it just because a simple off by one error. This is the first thing you should probably check for if you're seeing issues with arrays is that check that you're not off by one with your indexes because it, it happens a lot. All right, so I think this is good. We can go previous and that's going to the previous images. Now you might ask, well, how do we do the next? It's basically the exact same functionality as previous, but we just need to do the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this whole on click. I'll go ahead and paste it on this next button here. And instead of going down by one, we're gonna go up by one. And then instead of checking if we're less than zero, we're gonna say if we're greater than or equal to slides.length, then we're going to go ahead and say, go back to index zero. Otherwise, we're going to go to new index. Okay, so this should hopefully work. If I click next now, notice that it loops through. Now, there is actually a nicer way that you could do this. Instead of doing this ternary here, which is a little bit verbose, you can actually say new index mod slides out length. Okay. Let's just go ahead and click next, make sure this still works. Now, if you haven't heard of the mod operator, basically it takes your value, which in this case could potentially be three, and then modding it by slides.length, which is also gonna be three, it's going to take the remainder, right? So if three mod three, well, how, how much is left over when you divide three by three? There's nothing left over, right? So your remainder is zero, which means that your new index will become zero. Now, if this thing was like four, your new index would become one. So you see how doing this logic forces the number to be between zero and two because it's always gonna get the remainder and you can't have three as a remainder because that's divisible by three. But if that math is over your head, you can always just do the ternary, it doesn't really matter. Cool, so next and previous. Okay, so now for the more challenging parts of this, there's play and there's stop. So for play, we're gonna go ahead and add another on click. I like to just copy existing code if I can and I delete um, stuff that we might not want. Okay, so when we click play, we wanna set an interval. So let's say set interval. And then we're gonna go ahead and just call some type of function. And we wanna do that every so often. So the second argument of set interval is the delay that you wanna call this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say timeout, okay? Which is a hard coded variable up here of a thousand. <laughs> So every second, we want to run some logic, okay? There's like a primitive that's built into JavaScript, so hopefully you understand how set interval works, but you give it a callback function, it's going to invoke it every so often. Now when you call this, we want to keep track of the actual interval, because when you call this, it returns like a unique ID so that you can track this interval so you can stop it and kill it at a later time. Um, and we'll use that for the stop functionality. I'm just, I'm just doing that now. Okay, so when you click play, we want to create the interval. And then what we're going to do is we want to start sliding the, the carousel in the positive direction every second. So we already know how to slide in the positive direction, right? So I can go ahead and copy all of this code and just put it here. And in, the, in fact, I'm not going to do this right now. I kind of, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just make sure this works. I'm going to click play. And that should kick off the interval. And then every second, you just see it kind of slide through. Okay, but now we got to stop it. How do you stop this thing? Okay, so let's go ahead and work on the stop functionality. So I'll copy all this code. I'm going to paste it in. So in order to stop an interval, there's actually another JavaScript function called clear interval, right? That makes sense. You have set interval and clear interval. Now, in order to clear the interval, you have to pass it that number that I was trying to get before, right? So if I do this and get that number, you can actually clear the interval by doing this. Now, if you're observant, you might notice there's an issue with this. This interval was defined inside a closure, inside of a callback right here. So there's no way for this one inside this block of the callback 
to access the variable that's defined here. So we obviously have to pull that out to top as a value, right? Now, the way that you want to do this is you can use something called a ref. So I can say const interval is equal to use ref like this. And instead of saying const interval here, I'm going to say interval dot current is equal to that. And then I'm going to say interval dot current is equal to clear. So the ref is basically a way to have a mutatable piece of state. It's not really state, it's a mutatable variable that you can change without it hooking into React's re-rendering lifecycle. So if you know how React works, if there's state variables, every time you change that state variable, React will rerun and re-render the component. In this case, clearing and stopping an interval, we don't care to have React like re-render stuff. We just want to clear out some internal JavaScript thing that's going on, and we just need to keep a private internal reference to that as we start and stop intervals. Okay, so now if I click stop, Actually, I need to probably refresh the page because this is going to be running on some old code. So let's refresh the page real quick. Um, I don't think I saved this either. Let me save the file. Let's click play. And then I'm going to click stop. Okay, click play again. And click stop. Now, if you want to get a little bit of bonus points, if this was like actually a challenge you did during the interview, you'll notice that you have code here that is completely copied over here. Okay. It's good not to repeat yourself, right? So we can actually copy all this code out and there's nothing wrong with putting it up here and calling it um, increment slide. Okay, I'm gonna paste that code in there. Actually, I'm gonna paste all this code. I, I didn't grab enough. Let's grab all of it and we're gonna call increment slide there. And we're also gonna call increment slide here. Okay, so now we have this shared functionality that's being used in two different button clicks. And now our code is actually a little bit cleaner. This is called drying up your code, reducing repetition. It's, it's good. You can overdo it sometimes, so be careful. But this is a good, if, if it's 100% shared code, you can abstract it like this. But then you can even take this even further. Let's just go ahead and pass this entire increment slide function to the first argument of set interval. Okay, now we've cleaned up the code even better. Let's make sure this works. Every time you change code, make sure you save and you click your click around in your UI. Make sure you didn't break stuff. Um, probably one of the best de implementation debugging devices I can give you because if you start changing too much code and you come over here, it's very hard to figure out what you changed that's breaking everything. Okay, let's make sure these things still work too. Okay, everything seems like it's still working. So at this point, um, I think. Now, another thing I'd recommend doing is just always take a second and pause and think, is it a possibility that my code has bugs? Okay, Is there a possibility that the code I wrote is not going to work exactly how I think it is? Now, one thing you do is click play, and I'm going to click it again, and I'm going to click it again, I'm going to click it a couple times, and now you have actually like a bunch of intervals firing off at the same time, and this is not what you want, right? So if you are able to show that, hey, I'm going to debug, and I'm going to check things to make sure that this actually works in production that's also a very good like sign that you you have a an eye out for that debugging skill so how do we fix this issue okay this issue basically it's pretty easy i could just go ahead and say if this interval is already set we're just going to go ahead and clear it right we don't want to keep running a, a new interval every single time we're going to clear out the old one and then we'll set a new one okay so i'll save that page at this point, there's probably so many intervals, I might have to actually just refresh the page. So let's click play a couple times. Okay. There you go. I mean, that, that issue is fixed. And you could potentially even make this simpler. Um, now that I think about it, you don't need to clear the interval. You could just go over here. And I'm going to say only set this if it's not set. Okay. Because if you notice, every time I clicked it, it would reset, right? The timer would reset. So what we want to do is we're going to say, just don't create another one if it's already if it's already going. Okay, so even if I click it a bunch of times, it's still going to be going on that normal one second timer until I click stop. 
All right, so now for the hardest part, which I'm actually not going to do in this video, because first of all, I just spent about 30 minutes off camera trying to implement it, and I decided, you know what, this just distracts from the actual core of the video. In order to get things sliding in, you basically have to set up CSS transitions, apply them to the images, and then in your code, you have to figure out a way to hack at React so that when certain images are mounted on the page, you have an initial left property, and then after about a millisecond, you change that left property to like negative 100 to have it slide out. There's also the new image you need to have in and have that slide in from the left. And it just becomes super convoluted and crazy to implement. I didn't feel like it was worth putting in this video of me just struggling for 40 minutes trying to add that in. But if you do want to try to challenge yourself, I would say try to do that. It's again, like I said, it's a lot about messing around with CSS transitions and hacking with React to like get things to apply the correct CSS styles at the right time when React is like re-rendering under the hood. Because you'll run into a lot of issues where like you'll apply a left value, but the component hasn't even been mounted. So that when it does get mounted, it doesn't do the transition because you added the style too soon. Okay, it's a lot of like setting a, a timeout of one millisecond and then applying a new style to have it slide out and slide in. But yeah, if you decided to do this challenge and you made it this far, uh, good job. I think you are doing pretty good. Other than that, I think that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Okay, have a good day and happy coding.